Okay, uh, today I'm testing out my new Nikon 72mm VR lens. Uh, Kim and I are going around the coast of Scotland, uh, not Scotland, but just Edinburgh, uh, and down to Musselburgh and beyond. We're at a place now called Preston Pans, where they've got this massive power station, uh, which I took a photo of this from over near Edinburgh, and now we're actually beside it. It's a pretty horrible building, uh, so but I've got a kind of shot which I really want to get where it's got the green grass there, the blue sky, and then those uh, big industrial chimneys coming out of the, the green mound over there. So we're going to head over there and get a shot, um, but generally I'm trying to get some kind of more action shots with this, but there's just no real interesting wildlife uh, down at the beaches here. There's seagulls and swans, that's about it. There's no seals, there's no dolphins, there's no nothing happening here at the moment uh, but so this is kind of what it looks like and we're trying to get some shots of anything that's interesting around here just now to see the sharpness and how well this focuses. Right we're really waiting for the sun to come back out because this green hill here which looks very nice and green to our eyes to the camera is just looking kind of dark just now because we've got a great bright blue sky behind uh, at the bottom, closest to the hill, it's almost white because of the uh, kind of clouds which are just out in the foreground, or the kind of atmosphere that's in the way. The higher up, the, if you go directly up the way, is really blue. Closer down to the horizon, is more white. Uh, so maybe in Photoshop, I'll try and enhance the blues from these images. But that looks like the sun is almost coming out again just now. So we'll try and get some more shots where it's just green, blue pipes. Now it's nice and sunny and now I'm going to actually warm up. Go down to the beach now, see if we can get any interesting shots of the gunk which is on the <laughs> beach. Nothing interesting really. Okay, uh, just now we are, Kim and I have come further around the coast and we're in a place called North Berwick, or North Berwick if you're from Scotland. And uh, we, there's a great view over here where there's loads of mist coming off the sea. It's not mist, it's like sea spray. Right. So there's these great waves coming in, there's uh, all the sea spray that's coming in that's making it kind of look like it's misty, smoky, foggy something. Uh, it looks really, really cool. So I'm going to try and get some shots with my, at 70 millimeters of that area there. Uh, and with it being such a strong sunlight, it'll be quite cool having it maybe as a panorama uh, and also um, maybe just as a black and white, as a high contrast image. So I'll do a couple shots here. Now, also at North Berwick, you have a uh, a mountain uh, out at sea and that mountain is called Bass Rock. It is pretty much just a giant stone that's been blown out of the volcano that was Edinburgh I think and uh, it just landed out in the sea there. There's a little um, lighthouse on it and there's loads of birds that live on it as well uh, that just poo over it completely so it looks like it's white sometimes. So again so much atmosphere, so much mist in the air, moisture in the air that you're probably not going to get a high contrast shot of it today. Uh, you need it on a nice windy day, like today, no wind whatsoever, so this is a, a lovely day. But, no wind, but yet yeah, quite strong waves. Don't know how that works. <laughs> Come on, Kim. Come on, Kim, Phil, get up, get up, and we'll, you tell us about the new lens. Come on, up you come. Come on, oh, tell, tell us what you're shooting. I don't even know what I'm shooting. Oh, no, like, come on, no. come on, come on. Go on, you'll, you'll, you'll look really cool. Right, okay, tell, tell us No. Tell, tell us about the, the awesome lens. I'm going to prove to you that I can focus the camera. Here. Here, look, I don't have it. Look. Take it. Before the look, here, take the camera right up. <laughs> Video! <laughs> no, you say... <laughs> Rolling! Action! Go! Much better, much better. Hi everyone, uh, we've now taken the Nikon 7200 down to a place further down the coast called North Berwick. Or so, so far this is doing good. Still need to find some more interesting wildlife though. It's just really dull apart from molehills and Kim. 
Yeah, too many shots of Kim so far. Look, there's there's some down there. I'll try and get shots of old people on the beach. Yeah, really dull. Okay, let's find some more places that are interesting. Let's go. Um, okay, so we've now come to a place where we've seen lots of cars and lots of people at, but I don't know what they're actually looking at. I think it might be... Your finger's right over the oh, speaker sorry. there. Sorry. Uh, I think it might be a twitcher place, which is where people go, come and look at birds. I don't understand people who go bird watching without a camera and a lens, if they're just going to look at birds. I don't get it. Uh, it's cool if you get a shot of a bird, but if you're just looking at it and just seeing it, I don't understand. Um, so yeah, so we're trying to get some shots of some birds maybe in flight coming towards us just now as well. That might be quite, quite cool. Okay, so here I'm going to go through some of the shots I've taken with the uh, Nikon 70-200mm lens uh, and um, just what I kind of thought. So, for example, this one I was showing you here is the difference between 70mm and 200mm. Uh, if you get an idea of the actual length of the, you know, the length of the actual lens that you're getting here. Um, here I've focused on this knob there and then still the same again but just further back at 70 millimeters so it is actually although it's only like 2.1 times zoom it does actually seem like quite a bit whenever you're using it um, and again if you're shooting it so here is shooting at f 2.8 and as you can see uh, with this dog just slightly closer to me than where the camera's focused so the camera's focused there the dog is totally blurry so that's great how it well it's not great if you can't focus but it is cool how at 200 millimeters and at f2.8, the depth of field is tiny. And then when you do get the dog in focus, it looks more like a dog and less like a rat that it did before. Rat, now it's a dog. And so yeah, I was able to keep up with uh, with the, the dog there, no problem. And let's just zoom back out a little bit. And again, this was on a fairly misty day. Uh, well, not misty, but lots of sea spray coming off the, the sea, funnily enough. Um, this is okay. So found some swans. They are fairly interesting to take photos of, and uh, I thought this was pretty good. It was nice and sharp on the on the swan there, and um, that was at f four and five hundredth of a second. Uh, there was two of them. So when you're zoomed in at two hundred, you do get quite a lot of ah. Now this is where it got interesting. What I tried to do is with the speed of the focus, because it's an AFS lens, it's meant to be quite fast, or it's meant to be very fast. So it's trying to see how well. It, the lens, along with the Nikon D300, could keep up with birds in flight. Uh, so here you can see, uh, this is just another small baby seagull, and uh, this is at 180th of a second, as you can see up here, and it's 70 millimeters. So it's great how we've managed to get a bit of motion blur in the background. The shallow depth of field at f4 and 70 millimeters is pretty cool as well. So I was happy with that, and then I fold it around, and it stayed in pretty good focus. So there, you've got you know really good detail for not really that well, three hundred fiftieth of a second. So that's pretty. Yeah, uh, I was quite impressed with that. And there he goes flying around in circles, and, uh, and then off he went. And then there's some of his brothers. Okay, that was all totally blurry. That's a hundred eightieth of a second. So if I am properly spinning my camera down at a hundred eightieth of a second, everything's going to be blurry. So these are all a mess. So let's see. Oh, look at this one. Yeah, that one's pretty darn good. Okay, a little bit blurry. Not as sharp as it could be. Could blame that on myself. Could blame that on the bird. But if you look at this as an image like that, then yeah, it's not too bad. And there's some more seagulls, more seagulls. Actually, all of our seagulls and swans. Um, nothing all that interesting. So the next thing I want to try is just see how close. Oh, that's quite cool. Oh, don't look at that one, just as it's just jumping away, so I like that. Okay, I'm not going to be winning any prizes for uh, for sharpness or anything, but it's pretty cool how you can how you can actually shoot that. 
and get a nice blurry background so you're not totally distracted by what's in the background. Uh, and here, that's it looks, looks a little bit soft, not seeing too much details. These are all raw, no, these are all JPEGs, so this should be fine. Okay, so yes, now here were seagulls, which I thought, let's see how close I could get to these pretty ugly birds. And here, so I'm at 200 millimeters and at f2.8. And look at the background, the background is gloriously blown out, gooey nothingness. And uh, on the actual bird itself, it's like, okay, that's pretty, that's pretty good. F, ISO 400, so bumped up the ISO a little bit, just so I had a good, fast exposure on the actual bird. And here, so I was getting closer, closer, closer. Ooh. Yeah, so here, let's just see what it says. Distance, 2.99 meters. 2.99, 2.5 meters, so it's getting closer. Uh, on, on the Adobe Lightroom, subject distance. Uh, so the lens is able to tell the camera how far away the subject is. So if I go to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, yeah, even closer, 2.24 meters. So look at that. So this is me getting as close as I can to a seagull before it kind of gets a bit too scared and flies away. And it's great, you can see everything on it. I thought it's really impressive. Oh, look at this one. I love this one because you can actually see the sunset or the sunshine in the background of his eye. There I'm at 2.24. Here I'm at, where am I now? Still 2.24. I, I was edging as close as I can. Here I'm at 2 metres. Did I get closer than 2 metres? 1.78 metres. And here it's cool. You can see the shallow depth of field, like even from the front of the beak to the back of the head is blurry, but yeah, the eye, you know, you're actually starting to see the individual cells in its eyeball, pretty much. And then 1.78. Oh, look at him looking straight on. Oh, that's actually a pretty cool shot. I'm going to keep that one. But that's pretty cool, like dark side there, bright side there, sun in the background, f2.8, two thousandth of a second, 200 millimeters, uh, ISO 400. And uh, so, yeah, he obviously got pretty angry with me. That was at 1.78 millimeter, uh, 1 meter 78 centimeters. No. Yeah. Uh, and then here again, 1.68, getting closer and closer. How close can I get to the bird? And oh, this is, I thought this was quite cool is that the focus, obviously, the bird had just slightly moved its head. And instead of the focus being on the eye that it normally is, it's right on the furry bits of its nose. It's actually quite interesting to see the detail and the kind of textures that happen on the bird's nose that you know you'd never normally get that close to a bird to ever find out. I thought that was quite cool. Okay here I am at 1.5 meters. That is pretty much as close as the lens is going to let me focus at. And there that you can see individual hairs coming out of, it's effectively its eyelashes. You can see the tiny little bumps around the actual part of the lens, that's, or part of the eyeball. How cool is that? So yeah, sharpness wise, amazing. All f2.8 uh, and at 70 millimeters. Yeah, so that, where's the best one? See, that one's probably got the best lighting there. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Was there a better one? I like that one. I think that one is probably the coolest one. That'd be quite a cool image. I like that one. Okay, so then let's uh, just zoom back out. So yeah, so once you get bored of taking pictures of seagulls, what else can you take pictures of? So went around, uh, this is a beach, here's Kim, here's I thought this was a, a quite interesting one as well. Here you're seeing the effect of the change of the focus. So here I'm focused on this ground, this kind of muddy, horrible, disgusting ground. And yet you can see the pipe or the chimney in the background blurry. And then just change the focus a little bit. And then you've got in the puddle, uh, you've got the chimney in focus there. I thought that was quite cool. It's almost making it like a total mirror. Just having those little differences uh, in the focus there, which you can really really appreciate when you've got such an f2.8 at 70 millimeters. Yeah, so here's the area. Oh, okay, look at Kim. Here's a shot of Kim. Let's go straight into her eye here. And that is pretty, you can actually see the kind of individual bits of her iris going on there. That's pretty cool. 
That's what what are we zoomed in at here? We are at a good little ambassador for Nikon there. And then okay, so here was the, the chimneys and the grass shot that I was wanting to get, and that that's the image that I you know slightly edited, slightly. Uh, by just totally enhancing the vibrance up to 63% or plus 63 and that's just kind of made that all a bit more interesting and did I do something else here? What did else did I do? Yeah, just quickly enhance the blues so I was at before, it's okay but it's not as interesting as it was there very, very powerful kind of pop arty style also like it, very careful, you can actually see that it's just kind of a little bit dirty up here yeah, in this area, that's just from the actual smoke that's coming out of it. So I'll pick that up. And then, do we get some more? Yeah, go a little bit brighter. Oh, what's that one? That's a good one as well. I like that one. That was quite punchy. One of the things I do like doing is whenever I go somewhere and see other people taking photos. Here we've got a man taking a photo of himself. And you can see a seagull in the background. And then another person taking a picture of their kid there. Doing the perfect photographer's position there, just make sure you've got it at the exact height as a child. Just wandering around on the golf course uh, around there. So I thought that was quite cool. And then again, so th this was, uh, what's this? This was 70 millimeters, f6.7, a thousandth of a second. Uh, again, very messy date. This would probably be based as a black and white shot. ISO 200, and uh, you can even see the birds going past. So. When you're shooting far distance, everything's in focus there, and you've got some big ships in the background as well. So that's at North Berwick, and that's the kind of ships that come into Edinburgh, uh, fairly big tankers every so often. Not a huge amount of them, but you do see them every so often. And then here are some interesting little shots of birds flying past. Uh, what do you call them? Gillab moths? No, I don't, or was it sand feeders or something? So again, this is really kind of seeing how well the focus could stay on the birds and keep them in, in a good shot. And uh, it did a great job. Like, um, I was impressed by how much detail you can get so you can see all his wing pattern and everything there. And his little friend down here, see him with his mouth open. So that was all pretty good. Uh, as they fly on, fly on, fly on. There you can really see the details inside his, uh, inside his wings there. So again, he was pretty far away. What was that? 100. 16 millimeters odd one there. Okay, this next spot I wanted to show the kind of the effect of the different apertures on the bouquet in the background. So here we've got some interesting trees where the light's kind of speckling through and all that kind of stuff. And you've also got cars in the background. You can tell that is a Peugeot, I think. That's a Peugeot there. Uh, 206. And that looks like a Vauxhall. No, that's not a Peugeot over there as well. So anyway, this was looking more at the effect of aperture. And uh, with Kim being quite a distance away. So Kim is effectively there. That's me at 70 millimetres. And then at 200 millimetres, that's where she is. So that's at F8, as you can see up here. F8. And then if we go to the next one. Here is a f5.6, so let's look at these all together. Oh, and then the next one is 4, and the last one is 2.8. So let's get those all selected. So if we press Command and click those individual photos, then if we press N, it does nothing because we're not in the library. What we need to do is go to Library, then press N, and we've got the four photos coming up on the screen there. As you can see, the difference of like in f2.8 down here, the cars are totally blurred. At f8, you can definitely see there's some, you can see there's a number plate there. But uh, yeah, you can see 2.8 is obviously the softest, most lovely background. f4, you can see there's a little bit more spots in it. And then f5.6 and then f8, yeah, you're getting to actually see that there is a background there. And um, what else can you see there? Yeah, I think I, I like the background. I say F8 here is a little bit distracting. Um, the, it, there's too many circles going on here, but F2.8 and F4, very, very nice, pleasing, undistracting background from there, uh, from that shot. And let's look at the distance that Kim was at. Kim was 8.4 meters away. So that's a, a good distance away and at 200 millimeters. Um, and yet you're still getting that kind of lovely blurred out background. Let's see what else we've got. 
Okay, so here's one that's trying to follow a car. It's trying to chase a car here, or just keep it focused on the car. And again, it did it very well as it went past. It was going roughly, I don't know, about 30, 40 miles an hour. And uh, yeah, it kept focus on that. That was pretty good. Uh, what I found a little bit more difficult was a motorbike going past. There's quite a lot of bikers that go down the coast of Scotland. Um, and uh, especially if it's a nice sunny day, which it was that day. And let's see what the shots. So here it is at f2.8 and a 500th of a second. And we were just following him as he went past. And yeah, lovely kind of sharpness all over the bike. Let's see how well we can actually see the bike. So this was 2.8, a thousandth of a second, motorbike going at roughly 40 miles an hour. So you've got a little bit of like a freezing of the spokes there. You can see that it says Kawasaki, but there is definitely some motion blur. But uh, yeah, no, that's worked pretty, pretty well. I like that a lot. That was a um, wee off you go. And the next thing I'm looking at is the lens flare. Uh, and that is these bits of light, which you can see coming from a, uh, usually from the sunshine. And I thought that was pretty cool. I actually liked those bits of flare. Let's see what the other one. So yeah, just changing the aperture and brightness to see how they all look. Uh, Overexposing, underexposing. And, uh, but yeah, it, they weren't too, obtrusive. Uh, that's probably the, the strongest one there. Um, but uh, I think they look quite cool. I quite like their colours. Here, okay, I suppose it really depends on the angle that you're at. There is a proper orange dot, but that looks like it's very easy to clone out. That would just be done. You know, you wouldn't even know that that's there. Then I'm trying to get some shots of the moon. Uh, again, this was a fairly misty day, but uh, you can see the moon fairly well there. And here's another one where it's a little bit darker, but you can actually see the kind of blown up bits of the moon, all the craters, not blown up bits, what am I on about? And then the last shots were just as I was leaving the kind of coast, getting some kind of silhouette shots of the towns uh, and obviously of all the traffic as well. But uh, yeah, here, what, 5.64 thousandth of a second, it's pretty darn dark. But uh, just everything tack sharp, just no uh, like chromatic aberration or anything that I'm seeing there at all. It looks really good. So yeah, so that was my little trip down the coast of Scotland or the coast of Edinburgh, uh, taking you from Edinburgh to uh, Musselburgh to Preston Pans to North Berwick. Um, and uh, the 70 to 200 millimetre did a very good job. It was very good with how it kind of kept focus on subjects. And um, yeah, it was a really good fun lens to have, I really liked it, and, and you can get good um, candid shots as well because you can be so far away and yet be able to zoom so far and yet still get a nice blurred out background. It's uh, it's pretty cool like that, I like that a lot. So yeah, so that my one again, it's a second hand one, uh, costs about a £1,000, so it's still ridiculously expensive, but uh, it's a definite good buy if you're ever going to buy anything. So anyway, that's all for tonight. I hope that it was a very long one, but uh, I hope that helps. Cheers. Bye-bye.